Let's take one last look at the 2024 NFL Draft, but this time let's go back, back, back into the past and see what were my first thoughts with my first mock draft for the 2024 NFL Draft. So let's go ahead, get into this sucker, but I want to start with my final 2024 NFL Mock Draft because I was really proud of this because I actually hit on quite a few picks. So let's go ahead Take a gander. Caleb Williams, that was easy. That one was easy. It was child's play. Too easy. And then, uh, again, went with a lot of the consensus. Took Jaden Daniels. Uh, that, that just seemed to be the hot name where there's smoke. There is fire, though it is smoke and mirror season when it comes to the draft. But kind of bought into, okay, Jaden Daniels will go to the commanders at number two. Ultimately, I ended up settling with Drake May. At number three, I did try to think of trades, but like for me, just the most sensible thing for the Patriots to do were just sit there at pick three and just go ahead and take Drake May. Now, I did take Marvin Harrison Jr. So bam, right off the bat, four, four, four. I'm loving it. Marvin Harrison Jr. going to the Cardinals. Now, this is where things get a little tricky because this is where I did the trade because... I uh, I thought many people thought the Vikings were gonna make a move up and they did make a move up technically twice, but they did I it was also common knowledge that they wanted to keep that 2020 uh that uh twenty-third overall pick in this in this draft. But I couldn't see them moving up and I couldn't see them not giving that away in a trade to move up to get a quarterback, but I ultimately did. I think it was J.J. McCarthy here with the Vikings trade. So J.J. McCarthy goes at five. Technically, I got it. <laughs> I just didn't get it here. And I obviously I wouldn't have the second Vikings pick to play around with. Uh, we got Malik Neighbors going to the Giants. That one was easy. Joe Alt to the Titans. Joe Alt going at five shocked me because a lot of people thought that Jim... Our ball was going to be in on uh, J.C. Latham. That was kind of the hot name. A lot of people anticipate him to go a lot earlier than expected. And, I mean, to be fair, like, I mean, the Chargers did go offensive tackle. And the Titans did go offensive tackle. It just, I, I got it flipped there. I had Joe Alt to the Titans. I had Chargers take in J.C. Latham at 11. And then the Falcons, this was the curveball. This was such a freaking curveball. I go with Dallas Turner. Lo and behold, defender doesn't come off the board until pick 15 with the Colts. And they go Michael Penix. I would love to see the person out there that projected Michael Penix to the Falcons. Is it a good pick? Is it a bad pick? Honestly, we won't know for at least three years. Because <laughs> Kirk Cousins. And then again, Kirk gets hurt. Michael Penix is in there. We'll, we'll see. Romo Dunze did in fact go to the uh, get all draft draft guides are relevant now. Uh, he did in fact go to the Bears, so nailed that. I was sold on Bra on Brock Bowers going to the uh, Jets. That didn't happen. He ends up going at pick thirteen. Uh, they end up going with Olu Fashanu, which that's fine. That's a fine pick. Uh, I I kind of thought they might go look for the more short-term uh player in terms of okay get on the field this year then again olu with we know morgan moses up there in age tyron smith up there in age so they'll probably miss some time so i don't know may, maybe olu's number gets called earlier than we anticipated uh jc latham i had him going to the chargers uh he he does ultimately go to the titans though and man i i did a trade out with denver and I'll talk about Denver's pick when I get there uh, in, in this draft. But I had the Eagles move up and get, uh, I think I went with Terry and Arnold, even though I, I had Quinion Mitchell higher on my board. So I go Terry and Arnold. I really thought the NFL really liked Terry and Arnold. Maybe that 4-5-1 number kind of scared them, the 40. But the Eagles did ultimately go and get a corner, first corner that they've selected in the first round since, uh, was it 2002? That was Lito Shepard. Was it 2001? I can't remember. Uh, Raiders. I had them going with the tackle. That was the bet in favorite. 
If they go with the offensive linemen, they go with Brock Bowers. Apparently, it was a coin toss between who they were going to take, Terry and Arnold, Brock Bowers. I don't know how true that is, but... Anywho, like Fatsunu ends up making it to the uh, Steelers. Saints. It was Everyone and their mom knew they were going to go with the tackle. They go Talanisa Fuanga. Uh, I had Oluf Fasanu still on the board. So I'm still nailing, like, what position they go with. But, yeah. Kind of whatevs. Whatevs. I had Quinion going here to the Colts. Uh, they end up going with uh, Liatu Latu. And I was like, man, I think Liatu Latu is going to go higher than people anticipate. Not that people anticipate, but that where a lot of mock drafts have them, ta have them going. Because that's the thing, man. When you start doing these mocks and... He, he, at least commonly, he fell a lot in a lot in mocks. So, missed that one. Did nail the Steelers, or uh, the Seahawks, excuse me, as uh, I took Byron Murphy. So, haha, -ha, we're back at it. Oh, golly, this one's so funny. This one's so funny. So, I had the Jags trade, trade down. And ultimately, this uh, well, this pick technically ends up being Dallas Turner because the Jacks trade traded down with the Vikings. Uh, but I had the Bills move up and get uh, Byron Thomas. They end up going Keelan Coleman in the second round because they keep trading down. So who would have thought, man? Bills they decide to trade once in the first round, trade back once, and then trade trade back twice, totally out of the first round. So yeah, didn't nail that. Uh, did I? Try to remember. I went Fuaga, but I oh, I was so close to going Mims for the Bengals. I was so close. Oh, uh, and I just just outsmarted myself. I think I got Jared Verse here for the Rams. Yep, I got Jared Verse. I went with Verse here, so haha. There we go. Uh Steelers go with Troy Fotsenu. Do I stick with tackle? I do. I went with Mims there. Okay. So. I mean, I'm nailing positions and teams and occasionally. Like, honestly, I felt like I, I nailed a, quite a few picks in this. Like, Jared versus the Rams. Uh, I end up going Liatu Latu because he's still on the board to the Dolphins. I figured they'd probably go edge. That seemed to be the hot talking point there. But lo and behold, the top three edge players are off the board. They go Chop Robinson. This is this picks this just pisses me off, dude. I thought only five. I thought I didn't think all six quarterbacks were gonna go in the first round. They end up going to the first round, and for the first time this whole draft season, I finally reeled off of Bo Nix to the freaking Broncos, and I go with Michael Penix, and I hate myself for it. I hate myself for it. Golly, that just makes me sad. Uh, I go Nate Wiggins here to the uh, Chargers. That one's kind of irrelevant because they didn't end up having two first-round picks. I go Graham Barton to the Cowboys. He goes to the Bucks. What did the Cowboys? Oh, uh, what is, it's not Jordan Morgan. Jordan Morgan goes to the Packers. Uh, oh, that's right. They go with... Uh, Oklahoma tackle. Why am I blanking on his name? Tyler. We'll, we'll, we'll see it in a second. Uh, but Graham Barton, he ends up going a couple of picks later is what it is. But hey, we knew that Cowboys would go with offensive line. They did trade down. This pick was where the uh, Lions jumped up to get, to get Terry and Arnold. Uh, what did I settle on for the Packers? Did I go with? Morgan? Oh, I'm with Cooper DeJean. He ends up falling out of the first round altogether. Ah, man. I ah, just made too much sense. They end up going Jordan Morgan. Jordan Morgan, I do believe, makes an appearance in my mock draft here. Because I think Washington trades up or something. Uh, okay, Washington trades up here. And I have them going Jordan Morgan. So, ta-da. Uh, I got Chop Robinson going to the Cardinals. They do, in fact... Go with an edge player in Darius Robinson, though, I mean, you could also say he, he's a versatile defensive lineman, but uh, I think I have him going to the Lions in a uh, a couple of picks here. But I have Kool-Aid going to the Jags. He falls out of the first round, goes up going to the Saints. 
I got Darius Robinson going here. The Lions, they end, again, they end up moving up and getting a corner. Baltimore Ravens. I think this is the Jordan Moore. No, Tyler Guyton. That's it. That's it. Okay, Jordan Morgan's already off the board. What am I saying? So I have them going Tyler Guyton. Uh, the whole thing with them is they end up going Nate Wiggins because like, okay, guys, all the tackles are gone. We can't take a tackler. They eventually take one. Uh, I can't remember if they took Rosengarden in round two or three, though, off the top of my head. Uh, what do I have the Niners doing here? Oh, the, the, I go Jackson Powers Johnson. They go Ricky Parasol, which that kind of warmed my heart. I, I was a bit higher than the general consensus on Ricky Parasol. Uh, but uh, Jackson Powers Johnson ends up making it back to the Raiders. Ends up being a good pick. But I nail pick 32 here, boys and girls. I nail it. Uh, let me see where, where... Okay, make it visible, bro. Well, I end up going with Xavier Worthy. Yeah, I end up going... There we go. I end up going with Xavier Worthy, and I nail that one. Oh, man, people... It's funny. The same people that criticized me was like, oh, I ain't no way. She's ain't gonna go with Wordy, blah, blah, blah. There's other better receiver types. Are the same people that were embarrassing me after the day one grades video where I was like, ah, I don't know how I felt about Wordy. Uh, you know, I feel like he, he fits a little bit too much of Hollywood Brown. I get he's on a one year deal, but still, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't love it, and then th those same people are the ones that, that were so mad about me taking them in my final mock, where the same people come, in, come into bat for them. So wild. But let's take a look at my first mock draft for the 2024 class, and it's a two-rounder, so we'll, we'll try to run through it. Now, I do, when, when it comes to the draft order, I base it on my deep dive, like uh, my deep dive series, which we're going to be starting up pretty soon here now that the NFL schedule is out, but... I base it off of that. I basically do the NFL schedule and I I go with like, okay, what what is the average mean of wins for each team? Who's making the playoffs? And that's how I construct my my draft order for my official first uh too early 2024 NFL mock draft. Uh if you're not new to the channel, you know I always do a too early mock draft uh the day after or, uh, yeah, the, typically the day after uh, the NFL draft is over with Alex from Hail Mary Sports, which, hey, we're going to be drafting on, uh, or we're going to be uh, streaming on Draft Bros and here and his channel tomorrow. So be on the look for that. But Caleb Williams, that was kind of an easy one there. He ends up going one. <laughs> Nailed it. Just didn't go to the Cardinals. Uh, let's see a couple of these others. Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr. So, I mean, again, those top three ends up ends up being guys that go in the top five. Jared First does end up falling to 219. I was pretty high on him in the 2023 NFL draft. He decides to return to Florida State. And honestly, I thought he had a solid season. But good offensive class pushed the rest of this class down the board. Uh, let's keep scrolling let's go back one because i see brock bowers kool-aid ends up falling a little okay it's joe alt i have joe alt to the colts brock bowers to the commanders here but uh brock bowers ends up going pick 13 not too far joe joe funny enough joe alt goes at pick five just not to the colts uh and like i said kool-aid ends up falling out of the first round which kind of like maybe maybe sad maybe sad so Malik Neighbors, I have going to the Bears here at eight. He ends up going to the Giants, but I think we were in the, kind of the same wheelhouse where, okay, let's get a receiver. Do I first quarterback here? I don't. So I got JT Tui Malau. I haven't got into my edge deep dive, but he was someone who I already had a projection on uh, to finish the year, and he ends up deciding to stay. And I had him more in that back end of the first round area. I don't know where I'm going to have him in this class because this is a... This, if, if the edge class is anything like the defensive interior class that I just went over, man, this defense, this, this is going to be a special class defensive-wise. But, uh, yeah, they, they do eventually go with an edge just later in the draft. They have to move back up in the fourth round or move back into this draft altogether and get Austin Booker. Uh, Titans end up going with Olu Fashinu. He does go at 10. Huh. Funny how some things work. Uh, we got Amarius Mims. I, I, th I thought he was going to be a cat that 
would be in the running for the top three tackles in this class. He had the ankle injury, missed some time, then re-aggravated in the SEC championship game. So he had like only eight career starts to his name. He ends up only falling to pick 18. So still not bad, but this tackle class ended up being way beefier than I expected it to be. Uh, Cooper, Gene, look at this. I was even projecting him to the Packers way back then. Just wasn't meant to be. Hey, I thought the Giants were going to do better. Dude, it's funny. I did my Giants deep dive video last year, and so many people said I was so low. So, so low on the Giants, and they end up picking at 6 instead of 13. It's just funny. Funny how things work sometimes. Leonard Taylor, this one hurts, man. Uh, the just season wasn't ideal. Also being played out of position, like he played a lot of A-gap. This is like a three tech penetrator. That's when he's at his best. Uh, I don't, he doesn't uh, perform or doesn't practice at the uh, shrine, but he's there to do a bunch of interviews, talk to a lot of coaches. And then he just doesn't test well. Ends up going undrafted. Just, man, there, there's, there's still a ton of potential there with him. There certainly is. I think he, where does he end up going? Uh, I want to say the Chiefs signed him, but part of me is telling me the uh, Jets. It's the Jets. Okay. Yeah, so he's with the Jets. That's a really good situation for him. Okay, Vikings here at 14. Do they get their quarterback in the future yet? We haven't seen another quarterback here. Oh, I just skipped over it. Uh, no, I go Kalen Carson. Another guy who fell. Kind of had an up and down year. Struggled with uh, physicality. Uh, though I don't think he should have fell uh, as far as he did. I thought he was that like a third, fourth round guy. Uh, Mecca Buka, we'll talk about him in this year's draft. Haven't got to the receivers yet. I'm actually just starting the running backs today. I'm really excited because I just went through like all their analytics to prepare that draft guide for y'all, which that will be available once I wrap up the uh, the summer scouting series. Uh, that that will be made available for you. But I've been putting in all the analytics. And I'm just like, golly, this run back class is like, I think is special. Could be special. It's like, it's it's insane. But Mecca Buka decides to come back. Uh, Jazan Newton, man. He was hampered by a foot injury. And then, I don't know, man. I'm curious if he fell because uh, that, I don't, I don't know when he had the other, uh fracture like he got another fracture on his foot i can't remember if that happened before or after the draft so i don't know if that's why he fell or uh dan brugler was saying some people thought he was either too small or uh just undersized and more of an early second round player he ends up going early second round but yeah man the fall was fall was wild uh let's see we got keon coleman i liked keon coleman he ends up going with the first pick in the second round Kind of is what it is. Had him here. Uh, you're going to notice I was not low on Roman Dunze, but like, I'll I guess I'll talk about when we get to it. But like there, there were, there were a couple of things he really needed to improve. Fun fact, he really improved at him. <laughs> uh, Kingsley Suamate, he ends up like, he, this is a dude with all the tools. It's just so unpolished and whatnot. He ends up go, being the, uh, going at the back end of the second round instead uh da, 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 da. let's go to the falcons please uh quinn ewers low 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 we'll see how quinn ewers does this year but i i i went out on a limb and tried projecting some of these guys uh some of these quarterbacks like i was a big jackson dark guy still am still am if you haven't checked out my quarterback rankings check them out still a big jackson dark guy uh, you got Chop Robinson. He ends up going and pick 21. Not to the Saints. To the Dolphins. Fins up, baby. Fins up. Uh, Kaylin Keene. What the hell happened, right? Kaylin Keene, like, his 2022 tape is pretty solid. Like, you're, you're looking at this guy. He's like, he's a gritty player that's got some good short area quicks. And then just kind of a lackluster season. Uh, where he got bodied by Marvin Harrison Jr. It didn't hold that too too much against him, but the ball skills really weren't there. Goes to the Senior Bowl, really bad. Combine testing, not great. 
the, and I think he ends up being a, uh, I want to say he ends up getting drafted late to like the Packers, right? Yeah, he's at the Packers. He ended up being a seventh round pick. Like, dude, back end, like 255. So, like, we're talking, he was a couple of picks away from being Mr. Irrelevant. What a fall from Kalen Keene. Uh, Mason Smith, he ends up going into the second round to the Jaguars, by the way. Dude, Trent Bolke likes likes those guys. He likes long and he he likes he likes quick. The uh, Chargers, I have them going. Cameron Kitchens, another guy who had a bit of a fall. Uh, I think he still went in the third round, right? To the Rams. Like back end of the third round, right? Yeah, he ends up going at pick 99. So what, like, it, yeah, literally like the second to last pick of the third round. Uh, so he does go to LA technically. Uh, Dallas Turner, I, I was kind of immediately lower on going into the process or going into the last year's season. So uh, ends up being like edge two. So it is what it is. Uh, I think I was had Liatu Latu. I was low on him because of the injury, the neck injury. Uh, Bo Nix, I have him going to the Seahawks here. He ends up going much higher. Golly, what a world we live in. Uh, I have JC Latham at the back here to the Cowboys. They do end up going with tackle. He ends up going much higher. Xavier Worthy ends up going kind of around in this range. So that's kind of cool. Ends up being the Chiefs, though. Uh, Chris Jenkins, uh, how he was second round, right? To the Bengals, Chris Jenkins. Oh, I'm getting his daddy. I don't want his daddy. I want, here we go. Oh, why is it still giving me his dad? Yeah, he was picked 49. Okay. So not too, not too far, far off. Up going to the Bengals. Uh Niners. I certainly didn't have Ricky Parasol. Uh Grant Barton. Okay, so Grant Barton does end up going uh kind of in this range a little bit higher. Jatavion Sanders. Another guy that I got lower on during the offseason draft process. Just put on weight and didn't move, didn't test well. So it's like, are you gonna have to be like 235, 237 to like be that athletic receiving tight end for us uh he ends up being the last pick i believe in the third round beyond sanders uh no he he's the first pick in the fourth round there we go ends up going to the pontas uh, all right we got the chiefs here i go with graham car or Barrett Carter, he ends up returning to Clemson this year, though. There, he definitely would have been up there for linebacker one. He did choose to come out. Eagles, Jeremiah Trotter, he ends up balling. Man, I was a fan of Trotter, man. I really was. I just couldn't completely. Like, as the year went on, as the offseason process went on, he was just a hard guy to get behind because just the limitations with him troy franklin ends up falling i had him first pick here at 33 i know no roma dunze yet just wait because i, I kind of want to listen and see if i say anything there when i uh take roma dunze uh braylon trice i have him going here obviously he kind of had the whole debacle at the combine not debacle but shed all that weight and test all that fast wasn't necessarily a great look. Blake Fisher, he does end up uh, going in the second round. So, yeah, just not to the Bucks. All right, let's check out what this Texans pick is. Uh, ugh, DJ James, come on, dude. I was not high on DJ James. There ain't no way. This had to be Dwight McLaughlin. I think that's what it was. All right, so... Juice Wells, he ends up returning to school. Uh, actually, did he did he transfer altogether? But uh, he had the ankle injury. 
uh, re-aggravated or tried to play on it, hurt in the opener, and just couldn't get back healthy. Is he still with Ole Miss? Okay, he's still with Ole Miss. All right, all right. Man, that Ole Miss wide receiver core. Oh. Trey Harris there too. But let me, I want to listen what I Holt, say back about. back on the clock. I grabbed Joe Alt, DJ. And you know what? This is oh. a team that they're young at corner. I want to see what I have to say about DJ James here. Because I'm pretty, young. Sure, pretty sure this is Dwight McLaughlin, which admittedly I was much higher on going into the year. Destin was kind of like, mad. ends up being more of a third, uh, like a day three pick, which I think that's where yeah, I was experience. Really Just keep, keep, keep throwing draft capital with the position until you get it right. Not to say they can't get it right with what they drafted last year, but I'm just saying, bring in more competition. Like cornerback is such a volatile position. Now this guy isn't on PFF's mock draft simulator. But you've heard me talk about him. If you haven't, go ahead and check out my cornerback rankings right, video. Plugging yourself, it's bud. Dwight Mc out of Okay, so it was Dwight McLaughlin. I was, uh, I was like, I wasn't high on DJ James. I wasn't high on him through like in my summer scouting, nor was I high on him through my uh, <laughs> through the offseason process. All right, we got uh, Jamon Dumas Johnson. He ends up returning to school. I can't remember if he got hurt or what happened to Georgia. He's at Kentucky now. Uh, haven't got into linebackers, so I'll let you know. Uh, who do I have the Raiders taking? Cooper BB. Where's Cooper BB end up going again? I know he goes to Dallas. I think it's the third round. It's the third round because it was the pick that they acquired um, in the trade down, I think, uh, with the Lions. So, okay. Like Cooper BB. All right. We got a couple of picks here. So we got Zach Frazier. I got him going to the Bears. He ends up going at pick 51. So a little bit later. I got Liatu Latu here. Uh, again, the neck injury. He ended up playing another full season. So then you start to care a little bit less about the neck injury because it's like, okay, you're like a few years removed and you've played back to back full seasons. So he ends up shooting up a lot of uh, uh, my board in particular, but a lot of other boards. Uh, Snoop No Roma Dunze. There he is. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's listen. You could. Dude, Traylon Burks played in the slot at Arkansas. You can kick him in the slot. You can probably maybe Rome on doing this in spite of that. Or who, yes, needs that. But why not just keep adding weapons? Like, I just love that. And there is a, a phenomenal athlete here who, yes, needs a more bit polish at the receiver position, but he's produced in spite of that. And that is Washington's Rome on Dunze. Where you at? Right here, baby. You could do Traylon Burks played in the slot at Arkansas. You could kick him in the slot. You could probably put Odunze in the slot and have a field day. And I mean, you still have Kyle Phillips. Suddenly your receiver core looks very scary. Okay. Yeah. Did and he? I know something that he got really good at this year was the contested catch. The contested catch. Like his contested catch and just drop rate. The year prior was like, oh, man, a little sus, a little sus. And the hands got so much better this year. It really did. Uh, the Patriots, I have them going Michael Penix. So look at that, man. I wasn't even that high on Michael Penix uh, back then. Uh, he ends up going in the top 10. <laughs> uh, Trey Benson, I got him going to the uh, Packers here. Running back would end up like fall. I actually did. Jonathan Brooks go here at pick 44? I mean, it ended up being the Panthers, but... Oh, he was pick 46. Ah, so close. So close to calling when the first run back comes off the board. <laughs> I had it at 44. He ends up being at 46. Uh, but yeah, man, y'all know... Yeah, If you're not new to the channel, you know I was a big Benson truther. Always, it was all through this whole process. Uh, Johnny Wilson, he ends up falling, doesn't necessarily have an ideal 
year. I think part of that was injury, but like, you know, you're dealing with kind of a physical specimen, but he ends up falling to the Eagles. Uh, was it, was it in the sixth? I feel like it was more so the fifth. Wow, really? Sixth round? That's kind of wild. Oh, uh, we got oh, Braylon Allen. So, Javon Buller does end up going in the second, I believe. Look at me, trying to remember all this crap on the fly. But he goes to the Packers. He goes at pick 58. Uh, Braylon Allen, man. He just was not meant for Luke Fickle's uh, offense. He just wasn't. But he ends up, uh, I think, going in the fourth. To the Jets. Yeah, in the fourth. So, yeah, there we go. I mean, dude, this, this upcoming run back class is so good, though. Uh, Tyler Newman, I had him, I think, is the second safety off the board. And then Kalen Bullock, too. Kalen Bullock, I think, goes in the third. That's not terrible. It's not bad. Yeah, he goes in the third. Tyler Newman, I think he was pick 47. Yeah, he was picked 47, so I was just one off there. Ends up going to the uh, Giants. Uh, Nate Wiggins. I mentioned Nate Wiggins is a potential hot riser. Guy with a lot of potential because he didn't initially make my top 10 corners over the summer, but I talked about him at the end along with Kobe Bryant from Kansas as guys with big seasons who could end up as first-round picks. And I mean, Wiggins does end up being a first-round pick. Denzel Burke. Returns to school, though, probably would have been in that like corner, like cornerback discussion at the back end of the first round. Really think he would have been. Eagles go Blake Corum. Uh, lo and behold, they end up going uh, Saquon Barkley, actually. But Blake Corum does go in the third to the Rams. Detroit Lions, Donovan Jackson, another, another, he's a part of this group from Ohio State that are returning and chasing that natty. Uh, I think Donovan Jackson's probably gonna be in that day day two range for me again this year. It was actually pretty solid. Uh, oh, I had Jordan Morgan here. Okay, 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 okay. Jordan Morgan ends up being a first round pick. Uh, Travion Henderson, he, another, again, Ohio State, ends up returning. Uh, but qu with Quinchon Junkins there, dude, like Henderson's gonna get some carries like don't get me wrong but there's clearly a better back there like henderson i was looking i was like man this with this running back class i don't know if henderson makes it into day two i don't know man like again it's a really good running back class uh i got michael hall jr going to the ravens i think he ends up going to the uh Browns, right? Yeah, he ends up going to the Browns in the second round at pick 54. Not too far off. McKinley Jackson. He ends up, I end up like, uh, I think having like a fourth or fifth round grade on him. Uh, just because I wanted to see more production from him. Like, and I thought he would test out a little bit better, though. It wasn't bad at his size. Uh, he does end up going in the third round, though, I, I believe, to the, uh, Bills, right? I'm trying to remember all this on the fly. Uh, no, it's the Bengals, and it is indeed the third round, right? Somebody, yo, wait, tell me. Yeah, it's third round, pick ninety-seven. Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg. Uh, doesn't have an exactly ideal 2023 season. Uh, does end up getting scooped up, I believe, in the fourth round. And I think I kind of had him in that early day three range. Fifth round. Okay. So. Good pick by the Raiders, by the way. Golly. We got... Trade. Oh, that could be Trey Knox. That had to be someone else. 
I bet you it was Luke uh, Lackey. I'm at that point a receiver where it's like uh, Lackey out of Iowa. Damn. Okay. It is so, Luke Lackey. I was like, hey, no way. I did not like Trey Knox. I keep forgetting some of these simulators don't have all the players, so I kind of got to deviate. Uh, Buffalo Bills. I had Luke Lackey returned to school, by the way. James Williams. Golly, dude. What could have been? He's going to probably be a linebacker in the NFL, but... Uh, I don't know, man. I felt like him playing at safety for Miami. Not like he was even that bad, though, but I don't know, man. It's just unfortunate. It ends up falling. Uh, Ruka Rohoro. There we go. This uh, He ends up going way higher than this. A lot of the Falcons, they move up and go uh, get him. Uh, I don't remember where Zach Zintner end up going. Uh, d -d -d Cleveland Browns, so third round. Okay, so not too far off. I uh, feel like he probably falls because of the leg injury. Let's see what we got Chiefs going with. Rod Moore, he ends up returning, but shoot, did he like tear his ACL or something in the spring? Let's see. Yep, he suffered a torn ACL in spring practice. Golly, that sucks. That's just terrible luck. Uh, let's see what I had this final pick as. Okay, I guess I'm just going to watch it. For me would be uh, Kamari Lassiter. A very physical corner. Oh, it's last kind of fits their style if they want to develop that. So, okay. Okay, I end up going Lasseter. Lasseter ends up going in this second round. Yeah, he does. He does. Okay. So he ends up going second round. So honestly, not that bad. I don't think I don't think my early one was like too crazy. Of course, he had some guys that kind of came out of nowhere. Uh I was Jaden Daniels fourth round type of guy at this point. He ends up going number two overall. That's the fun of the draft. But, hey, let me know how close were your uh, early projections and maybe your final mock draft. How how on the how on the nose were you? Because I thought I did exceptionally well this year. But if you want an early start on the 2025 draft class, I've already started pushing out some of those ranking videos. So if you want a good watch list headed into the 2024 college football season, then I got you covered. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.